What's going on everybody? C4 here today bringing the newest episode of Realistic Rebuilds. And if you followed me on Twitter and if you're not, it's at BeastMode underscore TV. I asked you guys in a Twitter poll what rebuild you want to see for today. You know, because I had no I had no real motive to to choose a team over another. And the top request with I think 40%, I think there's almost 200 people that voted, was the Indianapolis Colts. A team that we deemed cursed in Madden 17. No matter what you did with them, you could not win. And, you know, even without Andrew Luck, I think Andrew Luck was cursed as well. Uh, it was it was really tough, but I have seen some responses in the Twitter poll saying that Andrew Luck is not cursed this year. So that being said, to know what direction we're going with, we're going to be holding on to Andrew Luck for the majority of this rebuild. Unless, you know, we say we're in year five, haven't made the playoffs yet, and then we can flip them. This is also the latest I've ever recorded rebuild in the history of my rebuilds. I'm recording this Friday morning. Usually I have these done at the absolute latest on like Wednesday night, th Thursday morning. I'm recording this. As soon as I'm done editing it, it's going right up. Tisk tisk. A little bit of a procrastinator over here. Uh, so that the reason why I'm saying that is because when I was looking through this roster really quick, this is the first time I've looked through this roster. We have our work cut out for us. There are not a lot of guys here in, in the format of a five-year rebuild that, that are going to really help us out, to be completely honest with you. So, but we did start by firing Chuck Pagano. I think he is, without a doubt, the worst head coach in football. Um, I, was, I, was, I was like, I'm going to go David Shaw, who's Stanford's head coach, or Jim Bob Cooter, the OC for Detroit. I went Jim Bob Cooter, but his last name is deemed offensive for Madden. So we have Jim Bob... I don't even know what that is. Right? Right card? Right? Oh, right card? Jim Bob Right card is our new head coach. Uh, but look at the roster... He said, man, I, I want a roster with at least, out of every position, I, ideally we could have 10 guys that are going to be gonna be set, at least five that are cornerstones, and you just don't have that here. So we have Andrew Luck, who's 27, he's 91 overall. I mean, he's going to be here for, the, like I said, we're going to commit to Andrew Luck. If this doesn't work, I definitely could say the Colts are prime for a rebuild revival uh, once we start doing those up again. We have Brissett, who's look, eh, all right for them. In real life, in, in relief for Andrew Luck. Cooter said, obviously, he had ties with my Florida Gators. Wasn't very good with Florida. Uh, but then he went to NC State and played fairly well. Uh, but we'll be going with Andrew Luck for our starter. At the running back spot, it's a mess. I mean, Frank Gore, he's you know he's 34. We're probably just going to have him for this year. Michael, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Marlon Mack does have some upside in, in real life. But as far as Madden is concerned, he's 70 overall. We should be able to draft a guy sooner than later. Is this the year? Is this the episode we go after Saquon Barkley? Who knows? We'll wait and see what the running backs look like in the draft class. Uh, wide receiver. So we have T.Y. Hilton. He's 27. He's a 92 overall. He's a really talented wide receiver. But 27 is an awkward age. That's especially at the wide receiver spot where I've found that around 29 is when you start to kind of uh, regress a little bit. Especially where T.Y. is a speed guy with 94 speed. Uh, a little bit worried. I don't know how this is going to play out because outside of that, man, I don't know. Aiken's not going to be here for long. He's 28. Moncrief is all right. He he was a slow burner. We used him before. I can't remember what rebuild uh, we actually used Dante Moncrief, but I think it was like year three and year four of the rebuilds when he actually started to perform well. So I will try to resign him as he is a very popular guy that tends to hit free agency. So I'm actually going to try to keep him on, and then we'll have to obviously look at bringing in another wide receiver. Tight end spot. You got Jack Doyle. He's at 27 as well. That awkward 27. Like 27 is the worst age. 26 we can work with it because you're going to be 30, 31 around year five if it goes that long. 27 is the worst age for my realistic rebuilds, and we already have T.Y. Hilton, and now we have Jack Doyle, who's a serviceable tight end. Uh, offensive line, Costanzo, he's 22 old, but we'll be holding on him for a while until we can build up our O-line, but if you've watched any of my rebuilds so far, we've been just dominating the draft when it comes to offensive linemen, so I'm not really worried about that. Same goes with left guard. Center's the only spot we have a key piece. Right now, looking at this team, T.Y. Hilton and, and, and Jack Doyle are big question marks. So we have Andrew Luck at QB, and then the next guy is Ryan Kelly at center. He should be our center for the majority of our rebuild here if we can continue to resign guys. Uh, Muhort, maybe? I mean, he took a big regression. He was like an 85 last year. Now he's right guard. Now he's a 78, so that's interesting. I don't know what What's his dev? Normal dev. I mean, we'll try to keep him. We'll try to make him work. I mean, one decent year, we should be able to get him back into the 80s. Right tackles, I mean, nothing much there. So we have to improve the offensive line, have to improve the running backs, have to improve the wide receivers. Uh, the defensive front, Henry Anderson was good for us. We kept him in both of the rebuilds at Madden 17 with the Colts, and he was usually a guy that could get 8 to 12 sacks. So I'm interested to see how well he develops. 
Uh, we have Jonathan Hankins here, converted D-tackle from the Giants. He's solid, so I guess another guy. We have some wait-and-see approach here. Nose tackle, we don't really have anyone. I mean, it's Grover Stewart, guys, 2374 from Albany. Hilarious name. Maybe, uh, hmm. you know what? I actually might make him a starter. I might make him my starter just because Al Woods 30, he's 81, he's not that good. We're not going to have a great defense, so maybe we get Grover Stewart some XP and see if somehow, some way, we can develop these three defensive linemen so we don't have to really address that through any of our drafts or free agency periods. Uh, we have Jabal Sheard, 28, 86 overall. We do have a nice Terrell Basham here, young guy, that we might be able to develop. But the only thing is going to be how we're going to get him on the field. Um, middle linebackers, we need to get better there for sure. We have my boy Antonio Morrison. But uh, we, we don't have our linebacker, I don't think. Right outside linebacker, we have John Simon, 26. That's a decent age. Same goes Burkevious Mingo here. Maybe we'll flip Mingo to the other side. I don't know yet what we'll do here, but these guys here are intriguing. But Sheard's an 86, and we, we don't want, just want to, like, suck so bad. Eh, you know what? Nah, we'll keep it as is. Um, looking here, you know what? This team here, D tackle so if we went... Our D tackles would be Hankins. Hmm. This this team might be a better 4-3 defense than a 3-4 defense. Because then you can put Jabal Shear, like Basham at 250. That's like that's like a big outside linebacker. What's his coverage stats? Oh, those are not good. Alright, never mind. Never mind. I guess we're gonna be rock and roll with the 3-4. Uh look at the secondary. Uh not no one good that's young. They have Quincy Wilson from Florida. Who we're definitely gonna try to we're gonna throw him into the corner three spot over Chris Culver, but Melvin's 27. Quante Davis is near the end of his career. Um, you know what? Let's see. Let's see if anyone wants to what we can get for Vontae Davis potentially. Uh, free safety Malik Hooker. So you know, realistically looking at this, the three key pieces are Andrew Luck at QB, Ryan Kelly at center, and Malik Hooker at free safety. Everything else kind of has some question marks. It's up in the air. Uh, strong safety here. We have Gaither's 25. Maybe that, that could be all right. We have old man Vinatieri here and Rigoberto Sanchez from Hawaii. All in all, though, tough roster. This is going to be a tough rebuild for sure. Uh, let's see if we can get something for Vontae Davis. I think he's really the only guy with any. I mean, maybe Jabal Sheard as well. We won't do anything that's too crazy. Like, obviously, we'll take a first for Vontae, but we won't take a first or anything like that for Jabal Sheard. Um, but I, I'm ready to eat it a little bit here on Jabal Sheard so that we can get Terrell Basham more involved and try to develop him right off the rip. But other than that, guys, we got our work cut out for us. So uh, we'll sim to the regular season unless any trades come through. That is worthwhile, and hopefully we can make it work. Teamwork makes the dream work. All right, so looking at some trades here for Jabal Sheard, there are some first-rounders that we're not going to, you know, abuse. I don't think Jabal Sheard in any... Well, no, he wouldn't go for a first rounder, but there are some interesting ones. A second, fifth, and seventh from the Rams. So obviously, Wade Phillips sees something that he likes. Um, we also had a Jeremy Hill and a fifth round pick option, but I, I think a running back's one of the positions we might want to go after. So that's what I'm going to take. We're, we're not going to fleece it. We, get a, we haven't checked to see what we got for Vontae Davis. If we even get a first rounder for Vontae Davis, I'm going to take it because I think Vontae Davis could fetch a first rounder potentially. But here, you know, we'll take the second, fifth, and seventh. Try to add some more depth in the middle of the rounds of the draft. And then for Mr. Vontae Davis. Give me a first rounder. We got a first from Houston. Who have had some success with old corners for sure. By getting, you know, uh, Jonathan Joseph. Just today. I mean, 29 is not that old. Like Vontae Davis probably has three, four years left max. Uh, Philly second rounder. We got offensive lineman. So what we're going to do, is that the only first rounder we had? Did the Jets? Jet, anytime the Jets give you a first rounder, you're going to take it. And there we go. We're going to have so many people. This isn't realistic. You know what? Do your own videos. Do your own videos. I think that's realistic. I think that, maybe not the Jets, but I think there is a chance. There is a society where Vontae Davis will fetch a first rounder. You know, not probably so much the Jets. Much more a team that... You know, we'll send the regular season here as we as we as we justify the means, like a, like the Patriots for example. Patriots have shown in the past they just do not care about first round draft picks. They know it always sucks. So a corner, say if Stephon Gilmore, or Marcus Butler went down, they could see a guy like Vontae Davis and go, yes, that's the guy that can help us win our Super Bowl. Um, so there we go. We get we added a first, a second, a, a first, six, second, fifth, and seventh. So we we added pretty much an entire draft class here. 
by offloading two players, which actually helps us get Quincy Wilson, a rookie, and Terrell Basham into the lineup as you know, we're here for year number one. So nothing much will change here. We're going to keep everything as is here on the offensive front. Um, a little bit worried about that O-line. We have Mingo, Boss, Simon, Terrell Basham starting. We got Quincy Wilson now starting with Rashawn Melvin. I think this is going to be a rough one. I think it's going to be a rough one here. But are we at 4-3? Can we just switch to a 4-3 here? No, we didn't. All right, did we? Are we at 4-3 defense? My coach. Schemes. Attacking 4... What are the Colts of 4-3 defense? All right, so that changes things up here a little bit. Um... Well, so left defensive end, we have Henry Anderson. Okay. We have Hankins. Like, John Simon is not an outside linebacker. D tag. Maybe that's why they're sucking so much. Uh, okay, here's what we're going to do we are going to take Barkevius Mingo and make him a defensive end. And then we're going to take our boy Jonathan Hankins, who's 84th at D tackle spot. And we're going to make him a starting D tackle. So Grover Stewart and Hankins will be our D tackles. Outside linebackers will be Barkevius Mingo and Mr. Henry Anderson. What's Terrell Bash? He's still at 74. All right. But we're looking a little bit better here in our linebacking core. I mean, it's not great to have guys that have no coverage ability whatsoever. But it's looking better. And from doing that, we now have an 84 D tackle where we had him before as a 78 defensive end. So I think that could help us out slightly, but I am not expecting anything big. So we'll pop back here at the midseason point if there's any contracts to talk about. And if not, we're going to go straight through to the offseason. All right, so here we are at the interview number one. As you can tell, he did not make the playoffs. The shock of absolutely no one. And our team is just zero morale. We're 2-13-1. and one. So Let's see where that... Do we get the first overall pick? There you go. First overall pick. Nice. And then we have the... Uh, I think we have the Jets first round next year. But if not, we have two potential, two fringe top five picks. Look at the stats. I just hope that Andrew Luck didn't do too bad. Oh, my God. Andrew Luck, 3,600 passing yards, 15 TDs, 11 picks. So he didn't have more picks than that, but he figured, whatever he is, 87 overall QB, a little bit better. He was the 31st in passing touchdowns. Sacked 71 times, which I don't know if that's the highest. Some of you guys that might be a little bit more up to date with my rebuild stats. That's up there, though. Obviously, this is probably one of the worst offensive lines we've seen. As far as running the ball, I mean, Franco, 800 yards, 7 TDs. Again, just a factor of the offensive line. Um, receiving T.Y. Hilton. Had a good year. Hey, that's good to see. 78 catches, 1,100 yards, and 4 TDs for T.Y. Moncrief didn't do so bad. 575 and 3. We got 977 and 2 from Kamara Aiken. Uh, as far as offensive line, who's, who's butt cheeks? So, zero sacks get up from Ryan Kelly, who's pretty much the only guy on the O-line. That we have plans for. 29, Costanza. Oh, my God. Costanza was horrible in Madden 17 in the sim. He's horrible in Madden 18. Uh, on the defensive side of things, we got 140 tackles. Bostic, 132. Gators, 120 for Jeremiah George. 12 and a half sacks from Barkevius Mingo. So, moving him to defensive end. Definitely paid some dividends. Six and a half for Henry Anderson. Four and a half for Hankins. Three and a half for Simon. And for interceptions, we got two for Malik Coker, the rookie. And one from Quincy Wilson, the rookie, and then a couple other bums here. But, uh, yeah, not uh, not the best. I don't know why we're going to check. Why are we going to bother checking the awards? Brady won the MVP. I don't think we're going to see a Colts on any of these lists. Nothing there. Nothing there. Offensive rookie of the year. Nothing there. Defensive rookie of the year. We got Basham and Quincy Wilson, but nothing for Malik Hooker had the most interceptions on the team. That's odd. Uh, nothing for best QB, definitely nothing for best running back. Best wide receiver, T.Y., nope. Offensive lineman, no chance. Defensive line, no chance. Linebacker, we got Barkevius Mingo coming at number eight. Even though he played defensive end for us, he's cheating the system. And nothing there. Maybe Vinatieri got on for kicker. No, nope, nothing. So terrible. One of the worst, probably the worst first year I've seen out of any realistic rebuild that we've done this year. So let's just get in the offseason. Let's just wash our hands dry this first year and get in the offseason. All right, so quickly look at the free agency period here. We have a whole lot of money, almost $70 million. 
Well, there's not much there. So we're looking at maybe getting in Gerald Hodges. You know, because we're it's it's tough. Because linebacker in the draft, we have a guy who looks pretty good, but you're never gonna know really until you get to the draft if he's still gonna be there. And Gerald Hodges is the kind of guy that I think could be good. He's 27, so he should be here for the length of the rebuild, but I don't want to overpay for him. Uh, and Derek Queen's the the only guy we're going in here at the cornerback spot. I feel good with Quincy Wilson, even though he's 73 to develop. And Denari, he's 26, so he, if we can get him to catch on, he can get, you know, 82, 83, somewhere in that range uh, for one big year. I mean, that's good value because I have not had the best of luck drafting corners outside of the first two rounds in this year's draft. So if we can land Denari at least, that would be a good starting point, but not a great free agency class by any means. All right, we're going to come in here live to the first draft as we get ready for our seventh round pick just because there is, I have I have uh, two prospects that could be beast. This is the best draft class I've had, I think, in Madden history. And I wanted to make sure, just to throw the proof of the pudding before we modify our players. Look at this. So we have a center here, seventh round center with good bench press, 32 bench press. He'll probably be at least like a 73, 74. But we need a middle linebacker. And this is an undrafted middle linebacker with the key combine grade, a 7.5 has been forever the combine grade that gives you a stud middle linebacker and we need one so you know we're kind of stuck between a rock and the higher place do we go with the undrafted guy or do we go with the guaranteed guy to make sure it caps off a draft class but i think with the which is how odd it is i've never seen a 7.5 combine grade on a middle linebacker undrafted he's a 70 all right so we get the fringe we get the fringe player that we need we're gonna go right to the end of the draft and we're gonna show you guys this draft class real quick I can't believe how good it was. Uh, the prospects are going to be legit. I have to tweak with our top pick speed a little bit to, to kind of fit the mold, but his overall won't change. Here's our draft recap. So in the first round, we picked this Walter Crosby, Walker, Walker Crosby, a running back. It's going to be Saquon Barkley. 83 overall, superstar dev trait, first overall. He's a monster. Second round, we got Solomon Allen, 80 overall, normal dev trait, defensive end. Third round, 77 overall corner, Ben Collins, quick dev trait. Fourth round, 76 overall right tackle with normal dev trait. Fifth round, 76 overall corner, quick dev trait. Sixth round, 78 overall right guard, normal dev. And then we just hit on that linebacker. That's not even that bad. 70, not going to lie. That key probably will get some starting minutes with us. But one of the best draft classes I think I've ever had. And early at the very worst, stacks up with some of the best we've ever seen. So let's modify these guys up, see who we have, and get ready for year number two. All right, so quickly looking at our rookies, first overall pick, we're going Saquon Barkley, absolute game changer that we need. Uh, we kind of talked about him a couple times on the channel, and we did the player career a couple days ago. We did the running back rank. It's a little bit Saquon Barkley overkill, I get it. But when you need a running back, you're doing the Colts, and you have the first overall pick, and you see a guy that's going to be an 83 with superstar dev trait. I mean, we didn't know the dev trait, but you got to take it. So we do have Saquon Barkley. We got Tyquan Lewis, the defensive end from Ohio State here in the second round. Brandon Faceyson from Virginia Tech in the third round. We kept this creative guy just as is. There's no good tackles I could find. Uh, fifth round here, we got Jordan Thomas, the corner from Oklahoma. Sixth round, Scott Questenberry, the offensive guard. From UCLA, overall one of our best draft classes to add with not a great free agency period. Hopefully it counterbalances and we can get better than two wins next year. Let's pop into the season. All right, here we go. As we get ready for year number two, a lot has changed. Now we have Andrew Luck with Saquon Barkley, T.Y. Hilton, Dante Monkey. Wide receivers aren't looking fire. I can be honest with that. We're going to have to throw that one up to, uh, you know, Lack of depth in the draft. Was it, literally, I didn't see one wide receiver outside of the first round that was worth drafting. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we got this guy we picked up off free agency, LaMichael McAllister. He's a speedster. He's a burner. We'll put him in a wide receiver three just to see if we can get a flyer and talent out of him. But, you know, yeah, it's work in progress. Offensive line is looking better. We have Jack Muir at the right tackle. We have Plessenberry. Uh, hopefully Costanzo doesn't get butchered in the next year's draft. We can work on the left side of the line. Um, defense is concerned, looking all right. We're now committed to an actual 4-3. Mingo coming up, 10 that sacks. We got Tyquan Lewis, 81 overall. Bunch of corners, kind of regret paying big money. Well, not big money. We played decent chunk, though, to get Denard, because now Quincy Wilson is not going to get a whole lot of playing time. And we convert, I tried converting him to safety. His overall doesn't change too, too much. Um, yeah, we got our seventh round pick here, starting middle linebacker. 
there's only so much you can do. We have two first round picks in the upcoming draft, so you know, not all is going to be wrong if we don't have a big year this year. The room's not going to be on fire. Well, you know, let's see if we can improve upon two wins. You know, that, that's just, you know, small baby steps. All right, so here we are at the end of year two. Obviously, we're not going to make the playoffs, but 5-11. I will take 5-11 over two wins. I mean, we're not going to have as much of a, you know, we're not going to get the first overall pick, but I mean, what pick did we get? We have the Jets first and our first. So we are going to get the second and third pick in the first round of year year number two. And boy, do we need it. But things are looking... On the, we're trending in the upward direction, at least here. So on the year for Andrew Luck, 4,100 passing yards, 23 TDs, 11 picks. Not bad, all things considered. The sacks, we've cut 20 off with just one draft. So that is, again, looking in the right direction. But we're going to need Andrew Luck to get about uh, at least seven more TDs. Getting up to the 30s would be nice. Uh, run the ball. Saquon Barkley didn't break 1,000 yards, which is a little disappointing. 872 yards. But the 14 touchdown is certainly respectable. I mean, that's a stat line very similar to like what Trent Richardson had as a rookie with the Cleveland Browns. Far as receiving, T.Y. Hilton continues the ball out. 74 touches for 100, uh, 1,100 yards and only one touchdown, though. So he's getting some Julio Jones-type numbers. Uh, Moncrief, almost 900 yards and 11 TDs. McAllister, the Randy, the BK Randy we picked up. 961 yards. And five touchdowns, so maybe we maybe we're looking all right. The wide receiver spot, as far as the offensive line is, let's just see how many sacks Costanzo. He's trash, man. We need a new left tackle, big time. Uh, defense, our seventh round projected undrafted guy, 142 tackles, two sacks, and an interception. So we'll see. Maybe this guy can be the dream. Maybe he could be the the the, the guy that makes everything work here. Uh, Terrell Basham with 110 tackles, seven tackles for loss, seven sacks. So that looks good. 105. Four and a half and two for John Simon. Uh, we got eight and a half sacks from Brachivius Mingo. The seven from Basham. Six and a half from John Hankins. And for interceptions, we got four for Darquise Denard. So making our our the only free agency signing pay kind of dividends. Three for Faceyson. Three from Thomas. Both those guys have quick dev traits. So hopefully that helps them out a little bit. Two for John Simon. Uh, all in all, though, I mean, it is what it is. We're work in progress. Look at the yearly awards MVP with the Tom Brady yet again. I don't think we're going to see very many Colts, but we might have a couple guys here. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Saquon Barkley coming in at number two. Defensive Rookie of the Year, we got McGee. Let's go, Delonte McGee. The Randy. Jordan Thomas coming in at three. Faces in at number five. Taekwon Lewis at nine. So that is good to see all our dudes there showing up. But that, that for McGee, that probably gives them a bump in dev trade potentially. Saquon Barkley, number 10 for running backs. Um... Best D line, nothing. Best linebacker, maybe. No, nope. best DB. Darquise and Eric coming at number six for best defensive back. Still staying at a 79 overall, though. A little frustrating there. Uh, but overall, we're trending in the right direction. It's time to have a big draft. Not necessarily have to hit huge in free agency. If there's a big guy or two, it would help. But I think we're going to have a monster draft, especially if we can get any of the same prospects that we did from year one. All right, so here we are getting ready for free agency. Two guys, two big time guys. We're trying to pillage the Atlanta Falcons. Vic Beasley classifies an outside linebacker. We want to bring him in and put him as a defensive end. It's about time to move on from Barkevius Mingo, I believe. And then Brian Poole here at corner. We we lost Quentin Gathers. He didn't want to return. So I need a new safety. Brian Poole, who was a safety at Florida. I, I'm pretty confident we can move him into that strong safety spot. He won't lose too much in overall. And he has a little bit more upside than Quentin Gathers. So hopefully we can lock at least one of these two. Obviously, Vic Beasley will be a massive get. But we'll see what we can get at draft time. <laughs> Another beast draft. Let's go. All right, here. So here's a quick recap of our second draft, which was as good as our first one. In the first round, we got Jonah Williams, the left tackle from Alabama, 78 overall, with a quick dev trade. We selected him number two. Not the best number two, 78. It's like as bad as you want to go. But we needed a left tackle, and there was absolutely no one outside of this guy at the left tackle spot that was worth drafting. He was even, like, red. He was supposed to go in the second round. Was not. I think it was a mid-round draft pick, but we had to get a tackle. Uh, then we needed a safety because we couldn't get Brian Poole in free agency. We did sign Vic Beasley, which is nice. So then we went with this random dude who didn't have really spectacular stats or anything. Ended up being superstar dev trade. So we made him Chase Hansen, the safety from the University of Utah, who's going to now be taking over for Clinton Gaithers. Uh, second round, this was the best pick, one of the better picks we've had. 
It's 82 overall wide receiver. We made it. Equinemius St. Brown. Equan. We'll call him Equan. How about that? Uh, from Notre Dame, 6'5", 205. Obviously, we had to manipulate his height and weight a little bit. Overall, stayed the same because he's a burner. So now we have him to throw in with T.Y. Hilden and Dante Moncrief. we got a 76 left guard here in the second round. Slow dev trait, which sucks, but we want to build up the O-line with cheap guys. we got a third round center, 75. Normal dev trait, fourth round defensive end with a 70. So, oof, you don't want to, we don't want to see too many 60s. So 70 was nice to see. Kind of make this draft class not look uh, like it had a low point. Uh, fifth round, we got a 77 guard again. Throwing in some Madden cheese. We had no no real scouting done. Just going with the strongest players available. As I said, to try to really thin out our, our expensive depth on the offensive line and replace them with cheap dudes. Uh, fifth round, we got 78 overall. Uh, right tackle here. Normal dev trade. And then the seventh round, we got our fullback cheese. The first fullback cheese we were able to get. Because everyone knows fullbacks. Uh, if you can get the right one, you can get a high 80s. And we got an 80 overall. Uh, Winston Demel from Kansas State. Actual prospect. Top fullback prospect in college football today. But overall, great draft class, and we had some big names here. Probably the most popular will be St. Brown. Uh, we got some good depth at positions of need. So now, let's jump into year three. Hopefully better than five wins. All right, so here we go. As we enter year three, I actually really do like the way this team is shaping up. First and foremost, we spent some of our coach XP, which is one of the most commented suggestions. Uh, so we're trying to boost up our offensive line. Um, I think that's why we bought the XP package. But looking at the O-line, looking all right. We're going with Jonah Williams over Costanza, who's been an absolute liability. Um, I'm expecting low numbers with Williams, but at least he has upside. The quick dev trait, we should be able to maybe go through one rough season here. And then for year four, year four, next year is the year, I think, we should be competing for a playoff spot as we, we the team builds up and grows up together. Questenberry's already an 81. Kelly's an 83. We're going with Mills here at right guard 77. Muhort 81. Tight end, we may need to look at bringing another tight end. But outside of that, man, I'm very excited with this these pieces. Lux in 91, Saquon's in 86, Hilton in 90, Moncrief in the slot where he dominated. I think it was our Bears rebuild that we had Moncrief. I could be wrong on that. Uh, now we have St. Brown starting as an outside wide receiver. Big things there. Uh, looking at the defense, I like the way they're shaping up. In the back end here, we have Malik Hooker, 83. Hanson, 78 with superstar dev trade. So even if he just has a decent year, we should be able to get him up into the 80s. Jordan Thomas and Brandon faces in our young corners starting now. We have Vic Beasley, who we got as an outside linebacker, made him a DN. He's now shot up to a 91. We threw Barkevius Mingo up on the trade block. Maybe we can get a pick and return or uh, maybe an offense, I don't know, an offensive lineman or something like that. Uh, Tyquan Lewis solid in the middle here as well. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about this team. Five, I'm going to say probably seven to nine wins is about that range. Might have a chance at wild card. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm expecting year four to be our big year. All right, so now time, finally, it's only been three years, to talk about some players we want to return. Hankins, I want him back. Kelly, I want him back. Simon, Doyle, Costanzo, these guys can go. I think we're going to be able to get, at worst, better options in free agency. And if we do make a mistake, I think we probably could outbid other teams to retain them. Uh, Brissett, I mean, no one else outside of that we really need to bring back. But yes, there we go. Two key pieces, Hankins and Kelly. We're going to, you know, pretty much, unless we have to, like, spend... Well, they want 30 and 30, so I'd say probably about 70 million between the two of them is about as high as we'll go. All right, so here we are at the end of year number three, and yeah, no playoffs is kind of expect there a little bit. Oh, that Andrew Locke plus 296 overall, so maybe not so bad. Eight and eight on the year. I'll take eight and eight as we as we get ready for a big year four push. Looks like great stats for Andrew Locke. 4,600 passing yards, 33 TDs, 12 picks, sacked 61 times, so we're up from last year in terms of sacks. Not good. Uh, as far as running the ball, not didn't get a thousand yards yet with Saquon either. Nine touchdowns. I mean, that's not a terrible year. I guess you could throw it up to the offensive line, but 56 yards per game is not gonna cut it. Uh, as far as receiving, St. Brown, 94 catches, 890 yards, six TDs as a rookie, 1300 yards, six touchdowns for Ty, 1200 yards, eight TDs for Monkey. Monkey's kind of emerging as like a low-key sleeper for uh, for rebuilds this year. Jack Doyle had a good year as well, even though he's set to hit free agency. Saquon, I mean, if you add those all-purpose yards, he's over a thousand all-purpose yards and 13 touchdowns. So combined, not a not a terrible year. Uh, as far as sacks, 19 for Williams, 15 for Muhart. So like, that's down. The sacks might be up, but overall they're down from the left tackle spot with Costanzo, who we just cut. So that's looking all right. As far as defense, McGee, our monster here in the middle. Undrafted monster, 141 tackles, half a sack, and two interceptions. We got 118 from the rookie Chase Hansen, who has superstar dev trait. So hopefully he's up into the 80s. 
That's right, sacks. We got 12 and a half from Vic Beasley. We brought in John Simon with five. Didn't get to the QB enough, though. Four picks from Malik Hooker. He's been a really, really good player for us. Two McGee, two for Thomas, two for Facey Sin. Um, but overall, yeah, definitely trending in the right direction here. Aaron Rodgers got himself the MVP. With Mr. Andrew Luck finally getting some damn respect coming in at number eight. As far as Offensive Player of the Year, Andrew Luck coming in at number two. Let's go. Defensive Player of the Year, McGee coming in at number five. Offensive Rookie of the Year, St. Brown coming in at number four. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Chase Hansen coming in at number two. Best QB went to Andrew Luck. Best running back, uh, nothing. Best wide receiver, T.Y. Hilton at five. Moncrief at six. Best offensive line, we had no one. Best defensive line, we had Vic Beasley coming in at eight for best linebacker, no one. Best DB, no one. Uh, hey, look, Zane Gonzalez, our kicker, coming in at number seven. So overall, though, good, good year, I guess, all things considered. But next year, we have to get the playoffs with this team. Uh, but yeah, we still got we got some decent money to try to make a splash here in free agency, and we've had two really good drafts. So as we get ready for year number four, things are looking good for the Colts. All right, so here we are, at free agency, and we're gonna get a little funky. We're gonna try something which realistically could happen. Is Rob Gronkowski to the Colts? So looking at the bids, I was gonna say like, all right, if the Patriots weren't bidding, we're gonna go for it. And I think Gronk, if he was 31 and didn't get picked out of the Patriots, he wants to go where there's a good QB. And Vikings don't have a good QB. Would you rather play for Marcus Mariota or would you rather play for an Andrew Luck? And I think Gronk in this scenario would play for Andrew Luck. If we don't hit on this, there is a tight end in the draft that we may be able to get that I'm not going to be too worried about. Uh, we have a punter because we don't have a punter. If not, we'll just draft one. And then Miles Jack paying big money. We got to swing him to the other side. We need a right outside linebacker in a big way. Was unable to find anyone worth drafting at that spot. So we're kind of going all or nothing here. Um, and as you know, in this year's free agency, just because you're the top bid doesn't mean you're going to land them. Uh, I feel like we should be able to get one of these two guys, and I'd be happy with that. Uh, actually, more so happy with Miles Jack over Gronk at this point. But let's go to the draft and see who we actually end up getting. All right, looking at our year three draft class, we got David Reese, the outside linebacker from the University of Florida. 79 overall in the first round. We needed an outside linebacker after we lost out on Miles Jack. We did get Rob Gronkowski which is a story for another point of the video. But Dave Reese is a beast for Florida. Uh, then in the second round, we didn't really need a middle linebacker. I was looking more so the best linebacker that we can make outside linebacker depth. So we got Barry Luazo, created prospect, quick dev trait, 80 overall. We're not modifying him in anyone because um, we really only have one good linebacker prospect left. So I'd rather hold off and use that for a guy that we actually need to start. But then in the third round, one of the best picks we've gotten in the rebuilds we got a right tackle alex leatherwood from alabama real prospect 82 overall with superstar dev trait that was unreal i mean we spent our big first round pick on an alabama tackle last year then in the third round this guy somehow slipped in the cracks absolute beast of a pick i think he had 40 some on the bench press that's why you see that 93 strength there's no way we're gonna pass up on this and he had 58 awareness so with our XP boost, this guy here is going to be a 90 plus if we don't win anything this year and we have to take this into year number five without a doubt. Uh, we get a 73 guard here in, or 75 guard here in the third round, sorry. Um, and then outside of that, not the best finish in the draft. We had a bunch of picks and didn't really hit on a whole lot. But anytime you get those for your first three, things are looking good. So now let's pop into year number four. All right, so here we are in year number four and this team is looking real good. Offensive line here, we got Jonah Williams, 80, Questenberry, 83, Ryan Kelly, 84, Muhort back to right guard as an 80, and Alex Leatherwood here as an 83. I expect this unit to get better. Now we have Gronk at tight end, finally an elite weapon, If you, I mean, depending on how bad you want to you wanna kind of throw it at T.Y. Hilton. So if T.Y. Hilton, we're putting St. Brown in the slot. Uh, we, no, actually, we're going to go back on that. I want St. Brown on the outside and Moncrief staying in the slot. Uh, Saquon. Barkley, even though he hasn't done particularly well, still an 88. Locks up to a 95 after a tremendous season. So I can say right now that Andrew Luck is not cursed in this year's Madden like he was in years past. Our linebacking core is looking solid. We have Basham, who's an 81. McGee, 81. Loazzo, 81. David Reese, a 79. Uh, Malik Hooker's an 85. And surprisingly enough, Chase Hansen with the superstar dev trade has overtaken him. Now up to an 86 overall. Our secondary is good, not great. Thomas is an 83, Face Sims is 82. Not developing as quick as their quick development trait uh, leads them to believe, but they're not liabilities. Uh, Vic Beasley, 92, 85. Jonathan Hankins, Stewart, 76. Tyquan Lewis, 83. I think, you know, 
good enough. Good enough, definitely, with this offense now in particular um, that we can win and get into the playoffs. I guess we probably could spend a little bit of Coach XP to help out some of our position groups uh, for progression. Really looking at it right now, I wouldn't mind our linebackers. Let's go see if we can get DBs and linebackers. There we go. And then in there... So now let's simulate to the halfway point, see if there's any contracts, and if not, go right to the offseason. Hopefully, a playoff berth for your Colts in year four. All right, so kind of our first real big free agency period here, or like with in-house in signings. T.Y. Hilton, we got to bring him back. Malik Hooker, we got to bring him back. Moncrief, we got to bring him back. Basham, we got to try to bring him back. Muir, I think, and Denard, these are like where you start getting into guys that how uh, we can let go. Quincy Wilson, unfortunately, never got any playing time to develop into much, and no one wanted to trade for him. But, uh, yeah, there goes a lot of our free agency money, so don't expect us to land any more audacious players for you number five, which is kind of the mantra when all, you know, if we're backs against the walls. But then again, we got Gronk in the previous offseason, and that's usually like a fifth-year signing. So I'm going to say we should be able to get three or four of these guys, if not all four. Let's go. All right, here we are at the end of year number four. And we finally got ourselves a wild card berth. Nine and seven Colts taking on the Chiefs. We're the home field team. So we're going to start one hell of a playoff push. I like that. Um, looking at where we finished. Nine and seven. So, hey, we got an NFC, AFC South title to our name to add to the resume of this rebuild. Look at it, Andrew Luck. He's playing really, really well. 4,600 passing yards, 34 TDs, 14 picks. Sacks are around that 50 mark, so it's definitely not great. But for the young offensive line, it's trending in the upward direction. I'll take it. As far as running is concerned, Saquon Barkley can't buy a thousand-yard season to save his life. Six TDs. I assume once we combine his receiving stats, it might not be uh, as bad. As far as receiving is concerned, I mean we're throwing the ball out like a like a mop. 88 catches, 1100 yards, and 10 TDs for Ty. 81 catches, 1200 yards, 10 TDs for Moncrief. 78 catches, 900 yards, 4 TDs. For St. Brown, Gronk, 718 and 5. Barkley, 453 and 3. So that's over a thousand yards and almost not and nine touchdowns for Barkley. But you know, maybe not the best scheme of to, to bring in Saquon here. Uh, he's not having, you know, the prospect's great, just not getting the touches, I guess. Um, offensive line, I mean, two of our stars didn't give up a single sack, which is good to see. Oh, Jonah Williams, come on. Uh, as far as defense is concerned, McGee with 135 tackles, two and a half sacks. He's been a surprise stud for us. As far as sacks are concerned, we got 17 from Vic Beasley, so paying dividends as our big money free entry signing a couple years ago. Tyquan Lewis with five. Uh, for interceptions, we got five for Facey Sin, four for Jordan Thomas. So hopefully, you know, if things don't go well, th this is enough interceptions to get these guys up into like the mid 80s instead of stop just dwelling in the low 80s. Um, yeah, let's look at the awards here. I don't know if we're going to have too many. I'm, I'm actually kind of disappointed with how Saquon Barkley has performed. Uh, Aaron Rodgers got himself the MVP. Andrew Luck came number 10 on that short list. Offensive Player of the Year. We have Andrew Luck coming in at number 4. Defensive Player of the Year. We had no one. Offensive Rookie of the Year. No one. Defensive Rookie of the Year. David Reese coming at number 3. Luazo at number 4. Best QB. Andrew Luck coming in at number 2. Best Running Back. No Saquon. Best Wide Receiver. Moncrief at 3. Hilton at 5. Best Offensive Lineman. Ryan Kelly coming in at number nine. Best defensive lineman, Vic Beasley coming in at number three. Best linebacker, we have no one. Best DB, we got Brandon Faceyson coming in at number six. So, you know, looking all right, but we have our first playoff berth. And, uh, yeah, let's get to it. Let's play the moments. We'll pop a Barrett, you know, only come in when we need to. Let's see if we can win one. For the Gipper. All right, here we go in our game against the Kansas City Chiefs. At home in front of fans at Lucas Oil Stadium. I hope to God they fix the extra point glitch. I have no idea. I downloaded an update before I came on. I don't know if it was just a roster update. But hey, we're looking good. 14-0 already. Offense. No missed extra points to, to go with that. Uh, all right. Settle for a field goal. Two-minute warning at the end of the first half. Looks like that was a turnover, unfortunately. And there's the lead for the Kansas City Chiefs. A big field goal. We make it to tie at 17-17. As we're now in the third quarter, the Chiefs are now up by a field goal, 17-20. Third down, make the stop. Defense is playing all right. Offense has done nothing in the second half. Uh, and there you go. They missed the extra point, but that is all she wrote. As our offense did absolutely nothing in the second half. So that's going on Andrew Luck as we're one and done in the year four playoffs. We're going to have to try to hope for something better in year number five. Come on, Luck. Stop playing like dog trash. 
dog trash. That's how you that's how you not get demonetized. You make up your own things that sound like swear words. Alright, so here we are for the year five free agency period. We have decent money. There's no one that we really need. So we just went in with the one player that, you know, that could help us. So we're going all in on Snacks Harrison, bidding a lot more than the second place guy to try to add him in there with uh, Jonathan Hankins to help us stop the run on defense. Other than that, man, you know, we're going to have to roll with the guys we had that got us to the playoffs last year, and hopefully we get a different result in the Sim. Please, Sim, give us some favorable odds. Let the, let the ball fall in our court. Hashtag quotes. All right, so look at the draft class. Uh, never good just to draft based off position only, which is what we tried to do. Uh, so everything, you know, uh, don't even talk about it. We, we just try to get D tackles. So what we're going to do here is we got this defensive end that's a 3-4 run stopper with 91 strength. We're going to convert him to D tackle because we missed out on Snacks Harrison in free agency. He'll probably get some meaningful snaps. He only has normal depth traits. not great. Uh, but that's really all we needed in this draft was to land a D tackle. Uh, and we got one. I think he shouldn't take too much of a hit. And you change positions. He's a little undersized. He's not 300 pounds. Hopefully, he can get some Lane Johnson supplements in him. Uh, but now, let's pop into year number five. Do or die. All right, here we go in year number five. Do or die. Uh, things pretty much look the same. I mean, St. Brown, for some reason, is not developing. Saquon Barkley has not played well, even though he's an 88 with superstar dev trip. We got Gronk here. Offensive line is looking solid. Leatherwood, 85, 84. I mean, everyone's a B. Which is a, the minimum I'd say you need to make the playoff push. Um, I mean, Andrew Luck played really well. So all things considered, you know, this all is going to rely on Andrew Luck. But this is definitely a 10-win team talent-wise. Uh, on the defense side, you know, you guys are kind of stunting a little bit. But we now have everyone above an 80s for the linebacking core. Hooker's 85. Hanson's an 87. Facey sends an 86. Thomas, 84. So our secondary is as strong as it's ever been. Surely, the 80 overall defensive end that we want to move to tackle shot up to an 83 overall, which is nice to see. Uh, Tyquan Lewis, on their hand, hasn't developed one bit. Vic Beasley, still a 91. You know, this is a team that could very well... This is like a team I feel they could get 12, 13 wins with the Sim. And then if you told me with the same Sim, knowing what happens, that they got three wins, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so setting our season goal here in year number five, it's time to make it to the Super Bowl. Super Bowl or bust time for Mr. Jim Bob Reichert. All right, so here we are at the end of year number five, and that is a bye, ladies and gentlemen. Very nice to see the bye. Uh, looks like high morale for a couple players on offense. High morale for no one on defense. That's a little worrying a little bit. Uh, so 11 and five, so back-to-back -back AFC South titles. Nice to see that. As far as stats are concerned, 4,300 passing yards, 42 touchdowns, 9 picks for Andrew Luck. Got sacked 40, 47 times. So that's the first time he's been sub-50 on the sack count. So an offensive line's put together. And Luck, that's a tremendous, tremendous season. So can say with 100% with certainty that Andrew Luck is not cursed like he was in Madden 17. I mean, he's, he's playing like a monster. As far as running is concerned, we broke 1,000 yards with Saquon Barkley. 1,100 yards and 16 touchdowns on the year finally the kind of production that we expected he'd be bringing every single year six fumbles so that's a, that's a little up there uh, as far as passing is concerned or receiving anyways ty hilton 97 yards 1200 yards and 14 tds big year there st brown 91 catches 739 and 9 moncrief 1284 and 13 putting moncrief in the slot he is probably the best slot wide receiver in terms of sim production that we've had in the rebuilds we i think we've seen him twice already like i said uh, earlier with the Bears, I believe. So he's been a monster. No, it wasn't with the Bears, because I remember we had Kevin White with the Bears. I can't remember who it was, but Moncrief is good in this year's game, where last year was absolute dog ass. Uh, Grok, 65 touches, 737 and 5. That's not a bad year as well, as far as blocking is concerned. All right. Not, I mean, tackle for some reason. They just punish the tackles in the sim. Uh, defense, we got 129 tackles for Luazo. 109 for Chad Hansen. On the sacks front, we got eight. Oh, did not get after the QB. Eight and a half for Vic Beasley, five for Taekwon Lewis. On interceptions front, six from Fazison, three Hanson, three Thomas, two Malik Hooker, and two for Ellis Hubbard. Defense did not play very well. I can say that clearly. For the yearly awards, MVP went to Aaron Rodgers. Andrew Luck didn't win it. What is it going to take for one of my players to win the MVP? It's always Aaron Rodgers. More often, Aaron Rodgers or Brady. Ah, oh, so lame. Uh, for AFC, Andrew Luck won Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year, we got Luazo coming at number four on the short list. 
Offensive Rookie of the Year, we had John Vincent. All right, cool. Defensive Rookie of the Year, we had Redmond coming in at number five. Best QB went to Luck. Best running back. Still no Saquon Barkley. Best wide receiver, TY1. Moncrief, two. So top two, that's good to see. Best offensive line, we got Ryan Kelly at three. Questenberry at four. Leatherwood at seven. Best defensive lineman, we have no one. Best linebacker, we have no one. Best DB, Brandon Faison coming in at number seven. So good production there if we have our first round by and back-to-back -back AFC South titles. Now it's time, you know, Super Bowl. Let's get that Super Bowl. All right, here we go in the AFC division around. Take it on the Chiefs once again. Potential revenge game from last year where they bounced us. Already looking like just dog trash. Dog trash is the word of the day. Uh, well, we missed the extra point. I only want to come in when we have to, when I absolutely have to. Fourth down alert on the 21. We'll, we'll pop in here to see if we... Are we going for it? Are we kicking the... No, screw Let's go for this. Let's see what this team's like. Double dig. You got to go for it in this time because if not, you just get kicked the nine and they're going to get a touchdown. It's going to be game over. We got Gronk. We got run MVP runner-up. We throw it into Gronk. It makes the drop. Nice. Makes the drop. Love that. Contested catch. Best tight end in Madden. Makes the drop. Cool. All right. Well, hey, they didn't get any points off that. That's good to see. And then we got the red zone. We got a touchdown. And then uh, they got another turnover. And uh, third down alert on the 33. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Coming for a nice little four vertical shot. What do we have? Moncrief, St. Brown. Oh, I want to go St. Brown. He's six. That size on the outside. Who wants it? We're going to scramble with Andrew Luck because he has some wheels. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He takes the multiple hits. We'll burn the time out here on the 15-yard line. We're in scoring range. We have to walk away with at least a field goal, but a touchdown made me feel pretty all right in my plums. First and 10 on the 15-yard line. I mean, Hilton's been a beast. We have Saquon Barkley if we want to try to run it. Let's throw it into T.Y., who makes the nice little grab. Puts us up on the two-yard line, but the clock is continuing to roll, so we'll go back-to-back, -back, go to the well. I kind of like Saquon Barkley off the backfield, but then again, it seems like every time I try to target a guy in the backfield, it's picked off right away. So we'll go to Gronk, wide open in the end zone. Hopefully we make this extra point, and that's enough to get us to the AFC Championship. All right, a lot of back and forth here. We're third down, we're in the red zone. Oh, that, there we go. That's a good enough. Um, maybe not. Maybe I'll speak it too soon. Oh, they turned it over in the red zone. All right, that should be good. Because we're on like a three losing streak. The last three rebuilds, we have not won a Super Bowl. So we definitely want to uh, get that monkey off our back. And there we go. We beat the KC Chiefs 29-19. to Very good for our first playoff win. Andrew Locke, 276 yards and three passing touchdowns. Saquon Barkley had 81 yards. T.Y. Hilton, 10 catches, 106 yards. As we are now moving to the AFC Championship game. All right, here we go in the AFC Championship game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Snowy game, which is never good for a team that plays inside. Third down alert. Big field goal. Ah, oh, we should have took that over. All right, we'll take this one over. Try to make amends. We got, from now on, we're going to take over every time we get into the red zone, unless this game becomes a, uh, a one-sided affair. We're in the snow. It's never good. You get guys like that. It's, it's, it, makes, it doesn't snow. But Andrew Luck probably has never played in the stone in his life. So we'll hit Saquon Barkley out the backfield. I don't know if they still have Le'Veon Bell or not. If not, that's a big showcase of two elite running backs. It's just Saquon. Now we're in the red zone here on the 20-yard line. What's the down? Third and one. We run it. Why are we not giving me any running plays? There we go. We'll go 45, quick base. Something simple behind this big offensive line that we've been investing in for the last four off seasons. Come on, Saquon. There we go, Saquon. Beast. Gain eight. Second quarter on the 12. First and 10 on the 12. Need to get a TD. We'll just go quick slants here. Obviously haven't played. Not really familiar with this playbook. We're using the Jim Bob Cooter, even though it's Jim Bob Reichert. We're using the Lions playbook. So we'll scramble. We'll force it into TY. And that was not a good pass. But hey, I'd rather go there. Then throw it behind in an interception to, I think, I don't even know, there's Cordrea Tankersley, former Miami Dolphin. Second to 10 on the 12. Mm, what do we got here? Gronk, maybe, St. Brown. 
Or just get sacked. Safety, uh, corner blitz. That was just not a good play call. I didn't like anything about that play call. All right, let's go slot post. I know this play. This is in the Eagles playbook. We have Moncrief is going to be our read the entire time. Let's have Gronk stay back in pass pro. Hut, 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 hut. Or we'll just throw it over the middle to Saquon Barkley who gets in for the touchdown. To hopefully with a made extra point put us up three. And we made it. Nice. Third down, they get their own field goal tied up at 10, and then they get their touchdown, so we don't have the ball. Third down, 47 seconds remain, third and six. We got to try to get some points out of this drive. I don't know who our kicker is. Shows how well I know my team. Uh, that's a T.Y. deep. Safety looks like he might not drop off. Ball wide open. Dante Moncrief's a beast. We'll go no huddle. We only have one timeout. Come on, look, give me this. 32 seconds left. We'll go wide sale, first and ten. Need a touchdown here. I'm feeling it. Let's see if Gronk can make a play. Mm, I don't like any of that. Throw it away. Oh, come on. You got to throw that away. We'll burn time out. Come on, Gronk. I know Gronk's an old man now, but you figure he'd make a play. 34 seconds. Oh, we're not. That's some, uh, what do you call it? We have Jim Bob Cooter. We don't have Chuck Pagano. The Chuck Pagano play call on second and 14 to kick the field goal. No, nah. Uh-uh. We're going to force it to Rob Gronkowski, who gets it up to the one. And now we're probably not going to get any points. That's what that's what we're going to do. Oh, my God. Six seconds. Five seconds. Four. Three. Two. One. He gets it off. He's throwing it into Moncrief. Catch a touchdown. Let's go, Dante Moncrief. Let's go. That, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take over because we're not missing this extra point. So you just quickly go down to play full game real quick. And we're going to make this PAT. We're not going to have them miss that. What a touchdown. Very clutch play. Zeros on the clock. Our kicker it looks like Troy Palomalu. And ties it as we go in to the second half. All right, let's get back in. Oh, Alex Smith. Alex Smith's the QB for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay. No Ben Rosberg. I see you, dog. They get a touchdown. Miss the extra point. Red zone alert. Time to take the go-ahead. We're going to kick all our extra points from now on that we're getting here in the nitty-gritty. They have two turnovers, yet they still lead. Questions need to be asked of Andrew Luck right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no! How did I know that was coming? Oh, that was bad. I don't know. I don't know why I wasn't sliding. I it just I thought I could get the edge. Red zone, can we get a score here? 23-29, we need a stop. Third down, make the stop. Better field position on this punt, here we go. I think they're probably gonna bleed the clock here. We have about 20 seconds to get a touchdown. If you ever watched me play pig slips last year in the stream with the Jets, you should know. I mean, we don't have a John Ross, but we do have a Dante Moncrief, a T.Y. Hilton. Let's make some magic. With how we ended the first half as any indicator, we're still in. So you never go Hail Mary. Hail Mary is just one of the worst plays in this in Madden history. So you go four verts. And you gotta try to hit the guy around the post. What do we got here? We got Gronk. We got we got St. Brown 6'5 with 90 some speed. I expect someone on the outside to get open here. Or a sack. God. Alright, no huddle. Five. Oh, we might not even be able to get this off. Well, that's that's anticlimactic. That's ridiculous, man. Takes you that long. Uh, thanks for. Oh my God. Fumble. Well, um, I guess we found out that Andrew Luck's not cursed. It's tough. It was a really. This is actually like a really tough rebuild. A lot of people. The last one we did was the Chicago Bears. They said the Bears is gonna be tough. Colts roster much more. You pretty much have to rebuild ninety percent of it. We have a good team. I feel like if we did one extra year, we would uh, definitely be a contender. Andrew Luck's starting to play really well. Our offensive line's finally starting to get good. Ah, oh, that's a frustrating loss. Man. And then, like, of course, just the, the nonsense there at the end. And the sacks. Oh, it's frustrating. 
But as it's Madden 18. Madden 18 is frustrating. But we've lost our last four rebuilds. So I'm going to say right now, rebuild next week. We're going to go with not like... We did the Chiefs once. We're going to do probably next week a team that's not as heavy. So we, at least we can get back in the win column. I mean, for our career mode rebuilds, we've been about 50%. We win as much as we lose in terms of getting, you know, to a Super Bowl and stuff. But we've only had, what is this, rebuilds. Let me quick look here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the eighth rebuild, and we're two and six for our record. So we need to get back in the win column. That being said, let me know in the comment section below what team you want to see me rebuild next. Don't give me like a Buns team like, I don't know what team would be trash to do right at the rip. Uh, but give me a team that's that's pretty much there, just needs a couple pieces. That would be a good suggestion. Um, but thank you guys for watching. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. If you want to get involved, help me out, support my channel, L and you know extra, check out my Patreon page. It will give you some sick perks to the upcoming location franchise series that we're going to be doing. Um, but until next time, it's C4, saying peace, out.